Six Flags New England is a great park. They have the best one-two punch I've ever seen, a really strong cast of supporting coasters, and an overall good atmosphere. But they have a problem. They have a pair of boomerangs, right there, right next to each other, and they're not good. Flashback was relocated from Kentucky Kingdom 21 years ago, and before its time at Kentucky Kingdom, it spent five years at a park in China from 1985 to 1990. It's old and twice relocated. It's probably close to its expiration date. And then you have Goliath. This only dates back to 2001 when it opened at Magic Mountain, and it was just relocated once back in 2012. But the new trains from Premier Rides are atrocious, and puts this on the list of people's least favorite coasters. Let's say the park got rid of both of these boomerangs. What could fit in this prime spot in the park? Let's look at the possibilities. These are the most likely replacements for Goliath and Flashback. Six Flags New England is owned by Six Flags, obviously. This limits their options a lot compared to a Cedar Fair Park. They've done recent work with RMC, SNS, Premier Rides, Mock Rides, and Zamperla. They've shown no indications that they're ready to work with B&M, Intamin, or especially Gerslauer, since they still have that feud over the new Texas Giant accident in 2013. They already have an RMC hybrid and a free spin, so those common Six Flags options are off the table. The plot of land for both coasters is 682 feet by 121 feet, but some of these options may only require the land for one of them. Flashback sits on 282 by 83, and Goliath 282 by 121. The plot is surrounded by footpaths, rides, restaurants, and shops. So we're going to stick to this plot of land and assume that we're not going to be able to expand it. Now, let's talk about the park's needs. I mentioned the Elite Top 2 and the good supporting cast, but if you watch my video on the coaster that every Six Flags park needs the most, the clear answer here was a launch coaster. They haven't had one here since they removed Black Widow in 1999. This was an Aero Shuttle Loop that was removed for Flashback's arrival in 2000, so getting a launch coaster back on this spot would bring the park full circle. So what are their options here? I said an SNS Air Launch Coaster like Max Force would be a perfect fit for the park, but would it be a perfect fit for this spot? Let's look at the Max Force plot. It sits on land 668 by 197, a perfect fit in length, and a little wide in width, but if they were to build parts of it over the midway, it could fit. This would definitely require both boomerangs to be gone, if they wanted to remove just one of them. Another option is the Premier Ride Skyrocket 2, fitting on a plot 232 feet by 89 feet, and could replace one or the other. The only downside here is that Lake Compounds is just 40 miles away, and they have the same exact ride in Phobia Fear Coaster. I don't know how much Six Flags cares about this. After all, they moved Six Flags New Orleans Batman the Ride to Fiesta, Texas, when there was a clone just 16 miles away at SeaWorld, so you never know when it comes to Six Flags. They could get Premier Rides to do something else for them, like a custom launched looping coaster. Think West Coast Racers without the racing. West Coast Racers is on a large plot of land because it's working around a footpath, so it sits on 599 feet by 282 feet. Obviously, this would have a totally different layout. More compact, rather than encompassing an area. The length actually fits. They just need to tighten up the width, which they could definitely do. Another wildcard option is the SNS Axis. This can be a launch, but it doesn't have to be and it would look amazing flying and twisting around the middle of the park. SNS is owned by Sansei, who also owns Vacoma, and at some point, we're going to start seeing more of these new Vacoma models in America. Let's see what they have to offer, starting with the Top Gun, sitting on a plot 422 feet by 334 feet. Not really ideal for this area, unless they got a custom model. The Firestorm is catered a little more to a long and skinny plot, at 526 feet by 259 feet. Still, about twice as wide as they can afford to go here. If they wanted to put a twist on their launch coaster, they can look into a Vacoma launch flyer. The one installation of this is FL Wyatt Fantasia Land, and it's 361 feet by 225 feet. But obviously, Six Flags would get them to build something custom for this land. Let's talk about some other Vacoma options that don't involve a launch. Starting with the Bermuda Blitz. This is a small scale rapid fire coaster with sharp airtime and inversions. And Let Coaster stands on a plot 314 feet by 120 feet. Even if they got a custom model, I think this is too similar to Wicked Cyclone, literally next door. If they wanted to get something more family friendly, following their history of extreme coaster editions, a Vacoma family invert would fit nicely here also. Freedom Flyer at Fun Spot Orlando stands on a plot 294 feet by 142 feet, which could probably squeeze on either one of these plots if they only wanted to remove one. The park isn't lacking in family coasters, 
so this isn't a big need. It all depends on who they're trying to bring into the park. Another choice for launch coaster could come from mock rides, which, let's face it, Six Flags would never pay for. They do work with mock though, and they do have a couple models that are a possibility for New England. Let's start with the Power Splash. Some of you may remember that before Goliath, there was a Shoot the Shoots water ride on that plot. They could bring a water ride back to the spot. This spans 514 feet and is made for a long skinny plot like this, so it's an easy fit. And I always seem to forget that the Power Splash also counts as a launch coaster, so there's an added bonus. A wildcard option for Mach would be their Big Dipper. Dynamite in Germany seems to be more catered to this plot of land than Lost Gravity, sitting on 414 feet by 126 feet. And it seems like the park could either build a big one that would take up both plots, or they could go with a small one that would replace just one of the boomerangs. How about RMC? Would they dare put an RMC next to an RMC, or are they reserving that honor for boomerangs only? The bottom line is that either of these plots could fit a whole Raptor prototype with ease. And if they wanted to make it taller and longer, like Jersey Devil, they could use both plots and make it really awesome. Six Flags Great Adventure isn't far away, less than four hours. So I'm not sure if Six Flags would jump at that opportunity to build another large scale Raptor, but they did give both parks an SNS free spin in back to back years, so I don't see why not. All RMCs are similar, whether they're topper tracks, or iBox hybrids, or single rail Raptors. They all focus on ejector airtime, rapid transitions, and barrel rolls, as well as stalls. So even though Wicked Cyclone and a Raptor look totally different, they'd offer a similar ride experience. This makes it a little less likely. But then again, with Six Flags, you never know. I mean, two boomerangs right next to each other. Six Flags New England only has one wooden coaster, and that's the 80-year-old Thunderbolt. The park could really use a brand new modern wooden coaster. This is a small plot of land for a major woody, but if they wanted to get something long and skinny like Mindblower, it would easily fit at 398 feet by 108 feet. There are a few factors working against this though. Six Flags has showed very little interest in building wooden coasters ever since they came out of bankruptcy. Their one and only being Goliath at Great America, and the story goes, they wanted RMC to give American Eagle the Iron Horse treatment, and RMC persuaded them into building Goliath on the old plot where Iron Wolf once stood. Wooden coasters are cheaper up front, but the maintenance they need over time is something that maybe Six Flags no longer wants to deal with. Also, putting a wooden coaster right next to Wicked Cyclone may look funny. The GP still probably sees Wicked Cyclone as a wooden coaster, and even though the ride experience would be completely different, I can still see them being discouraged by the similarity. One last out-of-the-box option. We know that Six Flags works with Zamperla when it comes to flat rides, especially those amazing giant and giga discoveries. But Zamperla also makes coasters. You won't find many of these at Six Flags parks, but they are installing a spinning wild mouse at Discovery Kingdom this year. When you think of long and skinny models, she sounds hot. I think Six Flags needs to look at their Thunderbolt model. There are five of these worldwide, two in America, including the original on Coney Island, as well as Roland Thunder at Oa in Alabama. These run out and back in a perfect straight line, 853 feet by 49 feet. This is too long, but maybe Zamperla can build one that isn't so long, but maybe is a double out and back instead of the standard out and back. These have four inversions and a vertical drop. It seems like it would be a popular choice, and it's listed at $10 million, which seems like a reasonable price for a Six Flags edition. Even though this option makes a lot of sense, I don't think it's super likely to happen, since Six Flags hasn't shown any interest ever since the model debuted seven years ago. So here's the top three most likely options in my opinion. Number three is an RMC Raptor. Whether this be the extended version that spans on both plots, or the one that replaces either Flashback or Goliath, I don't think Six Flags would be turned off from adding this, even with Great Adventure somewhat nearby. I think that having Wicked Cyclone right there would be more of a reason for them to look for something else, but I still think it's a solid possibility. My number two option is a Mock Rides Power Splash. Considering they took out a water ride for Goliath, this is a launch coaster, and it's perfect for a long skinny plot. The stars have all seemed to align to make this a possibility. But the number one option here is the one I started with, the SNS Air Launch Coaster. Max Force fits this plot of land like a glove. It fulfills their need for a launch coaster, and given the power of these launches, it would be a huge draw for a park that hasn't seen a launch in the 21st century. So there you have it. Let me know what you think of these possibilities, and if there's something else that the park could realistically add here. Also, do you think that one or both of these boomerangs will be taken out soon? And is it possible that they may remove both to add one new coaster? Sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, and subscribe if you're new here and love coaster content. And be sure to check out the other videos I've done in this series, looking at realistic options to replace coasters that I think are on borrowed time. I'll leave those links down below. And be sure to check out my Discord server. That's the best place to chat with other fans of the channel. And also check out my second channel, 
I made this for other content creators looking for copyright-free footage. Those links are also down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.